Right then, so we're all up uh, painting the actual main body of the aircraft. You might notice a few little areas uh, which I've just gone around and sanded them in to basically just to blend these uh, back tail and flapper on areas in a little bit better because I thought they were just looking a little bit thick if I'm honest. Um, Barley Grey, which is 051 for Model Air. Obviously you can use your own varieties. Um, this is obviously pre-thinned and all the rest of it. As we all know, if you're regular to all of this, um, but what I'm gonna do is just give it a drop of thinners just to help everything bleed through um, just a little bit. So it's a good shake. Um, I quite like the Model Air version of this particular color because it, uh, quite a bit of the old color cut there, because it does tend to have that very nice blue color, blue gray color. And uh, also the other thing I like about it is that it's very um, light affected, just like the real aircraft. If you look at uh, certainly pictures of the real thing um, with this color on, sometimes they look very, very much a dark gray, and other times they look like a very light blue, um, which is obviously where the colorization and the, the pigment is obviously affected by the light source around it. Right. Okay. We're gonna lightly spray this on. We'll start on the underside. Obviously, you know, I could reprime and take care of these other bits and pieces here, but I'm not that worried about it. So we're just gonna go straight in. Gonna start nice, lightish coats. And build it all up. So we'll just concentrate on those areas which have been not primed yet. And just give them a coat so it can all be drying. So when we do come in with the paint, we're all ready to go. And then all we'll do, we'll start laying down color. As you see, you can probably tell I'm not going in there and you know, it's plastering it in paint. We're just gently gonna build this up so it's drying as we go right the way over. So if I just carry on with the underside for the minute. Right, so there we go, that's the first coat of grey on there. As you can see, we've got a little bit of the pre-shading still showing through, got to be a bit careful, still a bit wet. Got a little few bit of touch-ins to do because the actual um, pre-shading is coming a little bit strong, especially on the underside here. So I'll just load up the airbrush and obviously we've got a little bit on the tail going on here, where it's a little bit dark and coming through. In the meantime, obviously I've also put the fuel tanks together because we're gonna carry two fuel tanks and a broad selection of weapons, but we can always paint them afterwards. Um, the Ford canards on here, they're painted as well, they're gonna need a second coat. So we're gonna let that totally dry off and we kind of have a good look around at it. And then we can give it another small touch-ins as is needed. And then our usual way, we're just gonna lighten it up. This is a new aircraft, and as we were saying before, it's not massively dirty when you see any of them, um, or certainly not at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is just very lightly weather it, um, more to give it a bit of depth, if you know what I mean, rather than actual weathering. But that's the plan with that. And then afterwards, we'll do a little bit of post-shading just around a few little areas. Okay, so as you can see on here, we've um, masked up the nose and this tail section, and we've just been spraying some of the Raydome um, color on there to touch them up. And obviously we've got to do leading edges and things like that as well. So we're just doing that now. Straightforward, tanning tape both sides, and we can spray just like that. Grab that up, just clip those like that. And we'll do the same on the other one. It just makes handling and standing a bit easier afterwards. Um, so we just run, run down there like that. Just dry those off a bit, so that's those done. Um, now obviously we've got, um, there's a slight discrepancy uh, depending on how you look at it. Uh, We've got various little parts in here which are actually a darker grey, um, which I'd like to do as well the same way. And these leading edges, it's hard to tell if it's this radon colour um, that we need to do there or if it's actually um, the dark grey which we're going to be putting on a few little other areas. So as I say, it's a bit tricky to know which one to do that because in certain lights it all looks different. It's a bit like all this radon colour could be the same as what's on the, the actual the pod tips and things like that. I don't think it is. I actually think it's a different colour, but it is very hard to tell. But that's something we'll look at um, a little bit later. So if we just unmask here, we can show you what we've been up to back here. So there we go. Let's pull these off. 
when you're doing masking tape, I don't tend to dig your nail because we're using acrylic, you tend to scratch it. So I tend to push it a little bit till it bunches up and then you can get hold of it. And then obviously we can go from the reverse side down here. And there we go, that's that tail section all painted. And obviously you can see the pre-shading coming through. The other thing is we did was little light swirls um, on the paneling just to light it up as we do with all the other ways. So that's pretty straightforward and easy. If we just take it off around the nose as well, we can have a look to see how that's working. Obviously as I say, I used a bit of jammy tape uh, on the nose section because it just makes it all a little bit easier to work with. So there we go, that's it off on the nose. And that gives it a look, and I don't know how well it's gonna pick up on the light, but I've given it that sort of motley by just lightening up, literally that's half a drop in a little bit of with the actual, um, the color on there to give us that sort of dirty um, type of look that we've got there. But I'm quite happy with that. It's all come out very, very well. Um, um, and then what we can actually do now is really get a coat onto this if you wanted to, to protect your work now. If you're feeling a bit confident and you can move on with it, then obviously what we do, we just mask up these areas, these leading edges of the wings and things like that, um, and on these actual the rails and bits and pieces, so we can get in there, get them done with this darker color, which is just done the same, and then obviously we can then get it a coat of clear, right everything to protect it in a lot of ways, because we don't want this paintwork getting scratched at this stage, and then we can mask up and we can work on the aluminium and uh, the burner cans on the back end here. Okay, so that's those areas nicely sprayed up and they're just a little bit wet still, so we'll just unmask them. And then we can have a look to see what we've got. We just carefully unmask under the underside, who obviously we've done down this edge here, and then obviously on the top. This up. If we just go like there, and then we can just tidy this up. And there we go, we've done that leading edge and that little sawtooth, which does tend to get a little bit dirty, um, but that's what we've done. We sort of we're trying to do it like that. So we just get it all unmasked up. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the back end masked up. Still not totally happy with the join down here at the back. Sorry, there you go. Down here at the back. So I've actually um, redone that a little bit and sanded it off with a little bit of filler. Um, and because of that, um, what we need to do now is prime up. So what I'm going to do is just going to give this, probably not as much as that lot. Uh, there we go, about that much thinners. Drop a paint in there like that. And we're going to be a bit, this is flat black, just XF1 Tamiya, and we're just going to spray in this back edge. Let's check our spray. There we go. Okay, we're just going to blow in and quite a flat mix. Now the reason we're using a flat is because we actually want a flat finish to the alclads, because the alclads are obviously very shiny. And we want it to look nice and flat. There we go, that's a dead flat finish on the back there. And then when we put the alclads on there, because they're flat, it's gonna be nice and dull, because it's gonna be heated metal, it's gonna be dull. Then in other parts, it'll be quite a warm look, um, and it's gonna be hot, so we'll make that a little bit shiny, and that way we'll get a nice little tonal um, difference as we run down the back there. But this first area here, it's sort of like a very flat aluminium, so that's what we're doing. We've got a little picture here that I took at Riyadh a couple of years ago. And you say this is the area here we've done, and then this one here is a little bit more shiny, and there's a nice different coloured ring running around it there. So we'll do those in those separate state. Okay, so now we're going to do the that area at the banks so we're saying. So we've got here dull aluminium. This is alclads, which are very smelly, 
but don't worry about them. They're very, very thin as well, so it's always best to keep the cap on, otherwise they tend to evaporate very, very quick. And also if you knock it over, you'll be in a right mess. Air pressure, right down, 10, 15 PSI. Okay, and then what we do is just lightly, a little bit more, 15 PSI here. Okay, we're just gonna lightly load this on top. Now the secret with it is also, so when you're putting it down, make light misty coats of it. Don't flood the area. As soon as you flood it, you get like a, a white effect. And we definitely don't want that. You want a nice, shiny effect. So you just dust it literally on. build up your layers. Okay, so that's the um, engines done and I've done the insides with jet exhaust um, just inside. So what I'm doing now is just giving them a bit of black wash just to go in between the turkey feathers and all the other bits. So this is the new version of the black wash going on there now. Um, the old one might have been a little bit gritty for this type of work but uh, for this one now obviously it just goes on like the others and because we're going over owl clads it does tend to pull up um, quite a bit and doesn't want to stick that well so you need to give it a little bit of a rub round to get it all in then all we do we just leave that to one side to do its bit to dry off and then we can buff it up now it might need two or three coats to actually do that uh, on there to get them in. But also what we did, we did jet exhaust Alclad um, down into the actual nozzles themselves, into those engine nozzles. And have watching fingers, because we don't want to put them anywhere. As you can see, we've got the Alclad on the back now, and that's certainly looking right. And then obviously they're all sliding the back and going there together, which is all coming together very nice. Next thing to do is sort out the pylons. We're gonna get them already in there, but basically the um, aircraft surfaces are all done a little bit of wash on there um, so these will go in obviously we'll put them in afterwards but to give us our sort of typhoon shape we're really taking shape now and coming together right then so the wash is now dried as you can see on these uh, exhaust nozzles here so what we do we're not going to moisten them or anything else like that we should because it's owl clad be able to just wipe it off with your finger and it comes off and also because we're rubbing it around it'll hopefully leave a tiny bit of the the wash behind which will then give it that sort of burnt, dirty look. And then what we can do, we can have a look then. And in some areas it's covered it quite nicely. In other ways I want it to go right to the end and cover the lot. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna give this another coat on top. But you see, it gives us that nice um, look that we're after, that we're trying to get the sort of the burnt look. So obviously when these two come together and the one fits inside the other, it gives us a very nice sort of metal jet exhaust look and that's exactly what we're after so i'm very happy with the way that that's going but we so we're going to give it another coat just to make sure we'll get that going in the meantime what i'll do is we'll just get a bit of glue and just going to run it to the inside edge in here so the easiest way to that is just to brush across and then we can actually fit these to the inside that's it and they can sit on there like that and dry off. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll put another bit of wash in there a moment, leave that to one side, it can get off and dry. We won't attach it to the aircraft until it's actually finished anyway. So that's the thing with that. We'll just pop some more on this one. Okay, so there we go. There's the Typhoon looking very typhoonish now. Um, what I've done is I've given the wheel wells a bit of a wash just around with the black, just to give them a little bit of depth and to dirty them up. Um, it's had two coats of future. 
which has gone on absolutely everywhere. So now we're gonna get on and um, decal it. Obviously, you know, as you say, full videos on this, so I won't bore you to death with showing me decaling it. Okay, so that's the decaling all done. Obviously, um, when you look at the instructions, it calls out for a lot more. You see real photos. They don't tend to have all those tiny little everything um, stenciling data on them. So basically, I've gone around and put all the major ones on as I can see it on the real aircraft as versus going around and doing everywhere else. So the next thing to do, we're gonna give this two coats of future. Uh, let it dry overnight totally and then we can get on and get the wash right the way over it and give it a complete wash with the Pro Modeler's Dark Wash. Okay, so that's the wash all dried. So usual thing, we're just getting some kitchen towel, um, put it into quarters. Um, I've, we've discussed this a lot and there's loads on the wash on the site, you know, I bore you to death with it all. Um, if you, some of the little things that have been occurring recently is that you might have noticed we've changed the formula of certain washes. The black um, wash and the mud brown were always the pigment it was very heavy and it used to separate and get quite gritty when you put it on and things like that. Um, now they're all to the same standard as the grey, the dark and um, light wash. They will always separate. That's something, you know, it's clay based and with water and there's a few other bits and pieces in there, it will separate. But you say a good mix around and everything else and you should be fine. Um, as you can see, we're all dry on here. If I start on the underside, normal thing, you can do it without any moisture at all and just give it a rub okay and obviously you're going to get a dirty finish a um, bit of moisture and a good rub round everywhere you'll come up with a nice finish and obviously being a relatively new aircraft we, i want to weather this one a little bit but i don't want it too um dirty we want it quite clean so there we go, we're just gonna go around and so say, take it off the nose there. If I do a little bit under this wing area, you can see, let's say this has just been the dark dirt, but because we're on quite a light gray, um, it looks very, very dark. Now don't forget, this will lighten off slightly. And if I just zoom you in a bit and you can see. Um, don't forget, as we said, this will lighten um, when it dries because obviously you've made it slightly wet, it darkens up. And then obviously you might think, oh, it's very light. But then obviously when you come back again with them putting on a top coat onto this, um, it's gonna re-darken it. And being a varnish, it's gonna then seal and it will literally go darker once it's all on. But if you don't use any moisture, you can make some very nice weathering effects like here you see in the middle, um, like that. And then obviously, you know, you wet it a bit and give it a bit of a rub and you can come up like, you know, with obviously just the panel lines like that. So this is one of those things, you know, personal choice, you weather it as much as you want to or as little as you want to and work at it like that. To get an idea of how it's gonna look with the varnish, when you've just been over it like there, that is the darkness it'll be when the varnish is back onto it. So obviously if you're thinking that's very nice, that's very dark. If I just bring you in on this particular area, as you can see here, um, that's what it'll be like when it's varnished. Obviously, if we come back to that um, in 10 minutes or so, when it's dried again, um, it might be a little bit lighter. Perhaps you can see on this wing already, it's going quite light um, down this edge here. But there we go. So we're just gonna work all the way around the model, getting rid of the wash that's on there and obviously leaving it in the panel lines. Be careful when you're going over um, decals because if you haven't sealed on a good couple of coats of future, obviously when you're going around rubbing like this, you're gonna uh, end up taking the decals and physically rubbing them off. So you just want to be a little bit careful. Normal thing, as I say, um, get a cotton ball bud, pull a bit out of your teeth, lick the end of it, and then obviously when you get right angles, perhaps in here, if you just get in there, it will take care of them. And it will get all the the wash out. Now the other thing perhaps if you've got a join um, where um, perhaps it's got a little bit of roughness to it where a seam line and you think oh look that's a mess because it's showing up my horrible seam line. Take a little bit of water you can obviously lick your paintbrush or whatever just come along okay and just give it a rub uh, in that area with a paintbrush and just wiggle it around and dig out the wash that's all gone in there. So if I show you this area here and say that leading edge uh, the part there, then all you do is come along with your cloth, give it a rub, and you've taken out the entire wash out of absolute everything there, um, and away you go, because that might be a little problem area that you want to take care of. So, you know, if it is showing up some imperfections, you can lose those very simply by doing that. Same thing in missile rails and holes and wells. If you get a cotton bud in there, like we're doing here, we can just clean them out and make them all nice. Okay, so we're gonna work all the way around the model and get the wash out of absolutely everywhere. 
Okay, so there we go, that's the wash all off. Um, just remember if you are using the wash, um, the usual thing, last wipe over, just do in the direction of the airflow, because unless you're very, very confident and you've been doing this a long, long time, you do tend to leave bits of wash behind. Um, obviously this is you for using the Pro Model as wash, uh, not that good if you're using anybody else's. But there we go, just do it back in the direction of the airflow and a nice wipe over, because sometimes what happens is you can leave a little fingerprint on there or something else like that. That's it. And there we go, we've got some nice crisp panel lines all in there now. A little bit of weathering. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna pop a little flat coat over the entire thing, um, just to dull it down a bit and see exactly what we've got. Um, also, just as I'm kneading it here around your cockpit area, make sure you're all get a cotton bud around that seal, because if you've got a, a few nasty little bits poking out, as I have there, it'll just take care of those and make them a, a lot better. Um, so there we go, so getting those areas, we're going to give it a flat coat, as I say, and then what we're going to do, come back with a little bit of what we actually call post shading, um, and we're just going to a little bit of tonal difference. We did a little bit going round it, um, as you can see on here, to lighten some areas. And what we're going to do is just pop round, and just going to dirty it up just a little bit. Certain areas, obviously, streaking back here um, after we've got the vents and the various um, cooling systems off, and other bits of hydraulic bleeding through. You know, just the little things like that, which we're going to take care of and do that. We'll do the same to the fuel tanks. I actually haven't got the wash off of these yet, but we'll do the same thing with those um, after we've got that on. Okay, so there we go. That's had, obviously the wash is on, your straightforward wash, looking very nice, just like that. Uh, I've got the front planes on, as you can see, but they're not stuck, they're just there to show us what we're gonna look like, so we'll just hook them out for the moment. It's a shame, really, they're not on rubber uh, grommets in there to hold them on there, certainly like some of the Tamiya parts, because it'd be a, quite a nice touch, and I did have a look to see if I got something that fits, and then that way you could fit them on the other side, but it's not really enough room to do it. But it would be handy to have a nice push fit um, so obviously taking it to shows and things like that. Right, I'm gonna do a little bit more weathering uh, to it. So what we're gonna do is just put down a piece of kitchen towel just to stop it scraping on the bottom. Okay, loads of thinners. Good, good dab of thinners. Okay, we'll just use a softest brush for this. Just gonna pull up a little bit on a brush, nothing over the top into the color cup, so we're just looking like dirty thinners, as we say. Now you could use anything you like with that. All right, so what we'll do, we'll just flick the compressor on. Have that coming through, check if we'd like, if it's a little too dark, perhaps we might want to do, that is just a little bit too much. So just add a little bit more thinners to that. Okay, make sure we get all the water off your brush. Here we go, into the thinners, nice mix around. Okay, that's spilling it everywhere. Okay, let's try that again. Just remember to blow through that area that you've actually got. Okay, we'll start with the underside, and all we're gonna do is just gonna run around little areas, as I'm gonna do here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just do the back edges of the flaps, just down there, just to make a little dirty shadow. Now, I don't know how well this is gonna come out, um, but there we go, it's a nice little dirty shadow on there like that. And then obviously we're gonna do little things coming off of little exhausts and areas like that. So all we do, we keep it nice and tight, nice looking down. And remember, we want it to look sort of watery, dirty, um, we can come back in a moment with a little bit thicker paint to help this all along. But at the moment, what we're trying to do is just sort of dirty it up in there. You can see that's coming out quite nicely. Same leading edge areas. And then what I do is a nice little touch, just go randomly, little figure of eights everywhere, and just pick out little panels, little areas, keeping it quite random just to dirty it up and give it that sort of oily, um, dirty look that actually aircraft get. Yeah. Little blow, just down in the intakes, nothing over the top, we're just trying to dirty it. Okay, and then just nice little light passes right the way down over the airframe, just 
like that. And that's enough to just sort of get things moving in the right direction of sort of dirtiness. Um, obviously what we do is we can come back um, in a moment with a little bit more sort of thicker paint and put in proper smudges in there. But at the moment we're just trying to give it that sort of worn um, sort of look, if anything. So what we do, we just put that down if we're happy it's dry. So just side of your finger, back of your finger, just see if it's dry like that and we're just going to work around everywhere else so we'll just do the top of these bleeding edge areas okay little swirls figures of eight okay we're trying to give it that oily look around those engines at the back um, and obviously we've got the vent here the um, uh, the self-starting unit or auxiliary, auxiliary power unit and that will have a, a proper smudge in a moment. We've got a little vent going on down here so we're just going to give it a bit there just a little over the back. Here we go just like that. <clears throat> and because it's a nice thin mix as you may have heard me say before it doesn't matter if it goes wrong because it's not going to be strong enough on its own to see. Okay, so we just do up down the runner area. Perhaps a little bit of a blast where we've got this yeah, sure. power unit at the back here. Okay, same again. Nice little backward flows with it. All over just to even it up. That power unit there. And there we go, we can leave that now to the side just for a couple of minutes to dry totally off and then we can come back in a moment with some more thicker dark paint to put in the actual exhaust um, and little things like that.